this video, I will show you a Notion project framework that addresses foundational project challenges and then adds innovation to push Notion's boundaries. Are you ready? Whether it's a project for your company, your home, or even your life, you need some foundational OKRs. That's objectives and key results for success. Let's look at those. Number one, you need to establish a robust project tracking framework with minimal moving parts. Number two, you need to establish networked thought. Number three, you need to establish quick wins to gain confidence. Number four, you need to provide project visibility to key stakeholders at all times. Number five, work effectively with teams. And number six, you should be using your time wisely. In order to ensure that each of the OKRs are met, I have linked the templates to the specific items in the OKR. The project tracker has three databases. Number one is the project sprint table. Number two is the tasks subtasks table. And number three is the schedule meetings table. Each table is linked to each other. These have been designed as examples to showcase possibilities. Stay on till the end if you want to learn secrets on how to develop workarounds in Notion. Before we dive deeper into the project tracker, let's quickly look at how bi-directional linking can be done inside a single database. That way you can efficiently use rollups to provide meaningful information. Let's open up a new inline database inside the examples page and call it bi-directional demo. In the name column, let's add one task and two subtasks. These two subtasks will link back to the task. Now let's change the tags column and call it checkbox and change the property tag to checkbox. We don't really need the files column, so let's delete it. Now let's build the bi-directional relationship within the same database. Are you surprised? Let's call the relationship as up. Notice that you have a new menu which syncs both ways. Choose that and don't take the other one. You will notice that another relation column has been created automatically within the same database. This is not something new because typically when you create this link across databases, these are created in their respective databases. Now let's call this new column as down. Now let's add a column called percent completed and select the property of this as a roller. Since you want to show these completion percentages against the task, let's choose the relationship as down, the property as a checkbox and the calculate as percent checked. Now see the magic for percent completed as you tick the checkboxes. I'm taking this approach since it helps me with two things. I can keep the number of moving parts lower. And number two, the columns can be used in a much more powerful way when both layers are available in one database. Now let's look at the database tables. I have a number of helper columns to set that up. On a day-to-day -day basis, the helper columns are hidden. The first table is what I call as project sprint. The visible columns are the period, which is in this case, the year. The project sponsor, since he is a person with overall responsibility for the final success of the project. He funds it and ensures that he gets value out of it. The name contains the name of the project, Project Alpha in this case, and two sprints. Typical projects last more than six months. So you want to see quick wins so that people don't get impatient and your projects stay funded. It's also helpful in home or life circumstances. The status column indicates whether your project or sprint is a priority, is active, is in the future, it's closed, it's completed or archived. The type is a project or a sprint. The progress is the progress of the project or the sprint. In cases of sprint, you can see that the sprints are linked back to project alpha. You can also see that sprints are downward linked to specific tasks. In the due date rollup, you can see the due dates of the specific tasks. 
In the outcome expected, you can outline the end benefit that you want to achieve. And finally, the meetings column contains the details of the meetings that have been scheduled with respect to the specific sprint or the task. If you click on the meetings column specifically, let's say on the Zoom call, you can launch Zoom straight away. The tasks and subtasks table contain the bones and flesh for the sprints. In the name column, we have outlined four tasks. Task 1 has three subtasks, task 2 has four, three has two and four has two as well. The type column mentions if it's a task a subtask. This is a pretty critical column since the formulae are designed on the basis of this column. For both tasks and subtasks, you have the option of providing a date or a date range. The due date is calculated on the basis of the last date of the date range. The review date is the midpoint date in the date range. In case you want two reviews, you can just modify the formula and have two columns. One for the review one date and the other one for the review two date. The needs attention column is a little more complex. It's based on a combination of the due date, the progress bar and check boxes depending on whether it's a task or a subtask. If you tick the task and ignore ticking the subtask, it still remains red if it's past due. The only way to turn it green is to tick all the subtasks. The network thought is a multi-select column that helps you put in some notes that quickly help to identify what could derail the project. It's networked since it provides information to all stakeholders and the sponsor to intervene if necessary. Done is a simple checkbox column, but then again it plays a crucial role in many fields. The project status is configured as not yet started. Started waiting for, on hold, and completed. You can add or modify statuses to suit your needs. The progress bar is only relevant for tasks. The project database relationship maps the task to the sprint. The subtasks relationship maps the subtasks to the task. The responsibility column helps you identify who is responsible. I've chosen a select property but if you link this back to a team projects database, then you can choose individual team members by changing the property type to person. The meeting links up to the meetings database. We'll cover this in more detail in the next section. The teaming objectives column is a roll-up from the meetings table. Typical projects also have dependency mapping. So the dependent prior has a subtask that influences the current subtask. The project notes is free form text. And finally, the project resources allows you to upload files. There are a ton of helper columns and workarounds. These are essential to set this up. If this and the formulae are of some interest to you, you may want to stick around after we talk about the meetings database. What you saw so far was the table view. The task calendar shows you the date range of the tasks quickly. The subtasks calendar shows you the date range of the subtasks. The project status view is crucial to the project manager. He can visualize completed, on hold, waiting for, etc. This is essential so that he can deal with them quickly. The task table also provides you with the task table view. And the subtasks table provides you with the subtasks view. You can modify the filters or add another view for incomplete tasks, need attention tasks, etc. The meetings table consists of when the meeting is scheduled, whether it's in person or a video conference. You can also enter the exact location or paste the call details. And it acts as a hyperlink to take you directly, say, to Zoom. It has two checkbox columns, one for reservation made or not, and the other for the invite that's sent or not. It links back to the task subtask database. You can also attach the meeting minutes back into the database for people to refer to. If the call is completed, you can check it off. 
The team objectives column is extremely important. It lays out what the call is for. Whether it's planning, visioning, problem solving, a scrum, an appraisal or a workshop, for example. The project sprints column links back to the project or the sprint so that you can view the meetings straight from there. So now you know what's going on on the outside. Let's talk a little bit about the engineering on the inside. The meetings database does not have any hidden columns. The tasks column which is linked is not necessary in the table view. Hence, it can be hidden. The completed column has percentages completed based on the roll-up which I showed you earlier. This is used for the progress bar. The progress bar is funny when two columns, completed and goal, are not numbers. Since one of them is a roll-up and the other is a formula, it becomes complicated. The workaround is to first set them up as numbers, then insert the progress bar formula, then switch them back to the original version. So I set up the goals column as one with a formula. That way I don't have to keep entering one every time and it can remain hidden. The same way when you look at columns which have been rolled up and you need them for the database or for the project sprints one, then you need it as a number and that's why I have a helper column, that's a formula, that extracts it from the rollups and does an arithmetic operation to derive the correct results. If you notice the progress bar, it's only on the tasks row. So what I did is I added another if condition where it shows up only if it's a task. I did this so that I can reduce the clutter in the database table. There are two attention columns, one for tasks and one for subtasks. I tried doing this in one formula, but then it started getting a little complicated. So I created these two helper columns to make it simpler. If you look at the attention column that's configured specifically for tasks, the logic is that if it's a task and the due date is not passed, it's green. Otherwise, it's green only if the subtasks have been completed. So you will find blank in the subtasks rows. For the subtasks one, there's similarly a blank in the task rows. And only if it shows up as done in the progress bar, it shows up as completed. In the sprints projects database, the logic for rollups is the same. But in addition, the progress bar for the sprints and the projects are calculated basis the columns that I pulled in from the tasks database. Because there are multiple rollups, you need multiple formulae to convert these rollups into numbers. Did you like the video? Did you learn something new? Do leave a comment below. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell icon and stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Peace.